Today we're going to compare two of the better known wet and dry vacuums, the Roborock Diet Pro and the Dreamy H12 Pro. Now this will not be a review of either of these units, I actually did a detailed review of both of them. I will put links in the description should you wish to check that out. But rather it's going to be more of me sharing my thoughts after using both of them for some time, what I like about each one and ultimately which one I would recommend. So. Let's get started. And I'm gonna start with the Dreamy H12 Pro, what I like about that machine, or ultimately what aspects I prefer in the Dreamy over the Roborock. And first on that list, and although it's probably not an important thing to talk about, but that's aesthetics and looks. And between the two, I really prefer how the Dreamy H12 Pro looks like versus the Roborock Dyad. I think it looks really sleek. I love the black color as opposed to the clunky white color and white plastic that's everywhere with the Diet Pro. In my review of the Diet Pro, I said it kind of reminded me of those old boxy CRT monitors. So in terms of looks, I think the Dreamy H12 Pro looks much nicer than the Roborock and it has a lower profile as well. So it is slimmer and it does take less space. And because it is slimmer, this takes us to the second point in favor of the H12 Pro. And this is the cleaning head, it has a lower profile, so it gets under baseboards and things much easier than the Dye Pro. Now in my tests, in my kitchen baseboards, both of them were able to go under them with no issue, but there is a closet in my bedroom, for example, where the Diet Pro could not get under, but the Dreamy H12 Pro could easily go under. So I would say this is an advantage of the Dreamy H12 Pro over the Dyad. It can more easily get under furniture. Now, also because of the design of the Dreamy, uh, where you can see the brush and the cleaning head, I also slightly prefer that over the Diet Pro, where as you can see, the brushes are hidden with that plastic top. And the reason I prefer that, and again, this is probably not a deal breaker, but uh, if you're cleaning a particular spot or a mess with the Dreamy H12, you can actually see where the brush is and you can position it over that mess. With a Diet Pro, you just need to go over the mess and uh, the, the brushes ultimately are gonna get that mess. But a slight preference for the H12 where I can see the brush and see exactly what it is doing. Now the more functional benefit in the Dreamy, and this one can go both ways actually. So the Roborock has two rows of brushes. There's a front brush and two rear brushes in the back. Now one can argue this leads to better cleaning performance and we'll talk about the cleaning performance in a bit. Obviously there's more surface area, there's more brush action that's cleaning your floors, but there's a disadvantage there. As you see, there's that gap between the two rear brushes and if you're cleaning a larger mess, this tends to get dirty and leave a streak on the floor. Now again, it's not the end of the world, you just need to go over that spot again, but it is a slight inconvenience for me, both because you need to go over the area at least twice to get that streak, but also because that gap does get dirty and it's one extra thing you need to clean. Whereas with the Dreamy H12 Pro, it's just one brush and it just gets everything, no streaks and less things to clean. Now, one last thing I prefer in the Dreamy H12 Pro over the Dyad is it's self-drying. With both machines, when you're done cleaning, you put them back on the base, they initiate a self-cleaning cycle and when they're done, they start a self-drying cycle to dry the brushes to prevent bad odors and potentially the growth of mold. Both of them, in theory at least, dry with hot air, and I'll get to the hot air part of the Diet Pro in a bit, but they have a different approach. The Dreamy H12 Pro is constantly turning the brushes throughout the drying cycle, which means you get even hot air across all the brush as it's continuously rotating. The Diet Pro, on the other hand, stays fixed for a period of time and then rotates the brush at different intervals, which means it's less even drying. Now, while I do prefer that in the H12 Pro, there is one slight disadvantage and it's that it's a bit loud. So it's not very quiet. The sound of the fan, but also the motor that is rotating the brush. The upside is the cycle runs for one hour, but I found within 30 to 40 minutes, the brushes are completely dry. So if you can put up with the noise for 30, 40 minutes, then that's not an issue. The Diet Pro on the other hand has a silent drying mode 
and it's quite silent, so a couple of feet away from the machine and you can no longer heat it. The downside is it takes about six hours in my tests to dry the brushes effectively. Now, on that point of the heated drying with Roborock, I did dedicate a good segment in my review uh, on this topic where I said that it's a feature that's falsely advertised. I'm not going to repeat everything I said there. Do watch the review if you're interested, but a quick summary of that. The Diet Pro advertises hot air drying. In my test where I used an infrared thermometer, but also a food thermometer, uh, there was no hot air that was coming out. It was just regular air. I did ask for a replacement. The replacement unit as well functioned the same way. I did try to get in touch with Roborock. They gave me some vague answers and then they went silent, which led me to believe this is a falsely advertised feature. Now, an update since that last video, I did two things. One, I did take apart the base to try to see if there's a heating element there or not. Uh, and to my surprise, there was a heating element. So that was a bit of a relief that the heating element does exist, but it did not get hot by any means. Um, I ran the cleaning cycle and waited for 20, 30 minutes and put a thermometer there and the heating element did not get hot. Another update, I did get a hold of a communication manager in Roborock and he assured me that in their lab tests, and I'm reading that from his email, at a room temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, the heat source stops at 46 degrees Celsius. And at a room temperature of 25 degrees, the heat source stops at 53 degrees, which is definitely hot air. Now, my ambient room temperature was around 20 degrees and I clocked the heating source at just a couple degrees more, 23 degrees maybe. Uh, so it is not heating. Now, in response to that, I was a bit reassured, but then I told him then probably something is wrong with the units that I tested and they were two different units, to which his response was, no, I can assure you the units are working perfectly fine. And something along the lines that we've tested these rigorously in different scenarios to make sure they're optimal in drying the brushes, which I found was fluff talk with nothing concrete. So um, I, I, that's the last thing I'm gonna say about this topic. Um, I don't know what's happening with Roborock. Um, the heating element does appear to be there, but there's something definitely wrong. A lot of people left comments on my YouTube video and also on Reddit complaining that their brushes are not being dried over multiple hours, some even over six hours. So clearly there's something wrong here. I understand the intention was to have hot air. There is a heating element. Is there a quality control issue at Roborock? Is there a production batch that something went wrong in? I have no idea. All I know is from what it seems, Roborock is being a bit vague and mysterious. Something is wrong, but they're not addressing this um, uh, correctly. And um, at the end of the day, fact of the matter, probably if you get one, it's not gonna have hot air drying. It's probably gonna take multiple hours, up to six hours to dry your brushes, but the upside is it is silent drying. So on that point, if drying is something important for you, and if it's not, that's fine, because I kind of was attacked by someone who was complaining that drying is a non-feature and I shouldn't care about it. That's your prerogative. Personally, I do care about this feature, and more so when a company advertises that, it does not sit right with me that they can blatantly lie, and I'm gonna put that between quotes about that feature. Um, if anything, I feel deceived, and if someone has considered this feature as a decisive feature in their choice of vacuum, it is not fair that the feature doesn't exist, although it's clearly advertised as hot air, both on their product page, on their website, and even on the box itself, where they say it dries with real hot air. So that's all I'm gonna say on that topic. If it does matter to you, I'm here to tell you the facts. With a Diet Pro, it's probably gonna take five, six hours to get dried brushes, but you're not gonna hear any sound. With the Dreamy H12 Pro, you're gonna get toasty dried brushes in about 30, 40 minutes, but it's gonna be a bit loud over that 30, 40 minutes. What you prefer is up to you. With that out of the way, this kind of concludes what I like about the Dreamy H12 Pro, and you might have realized most of these things are not major. But then what I like about the Diet Pro and where I prefer it over the H12 Pro, 
And there's a lot of things I like about the Naiad. First off, although I prefer the looks of the H12 Pro and the fact that it is slimmer, sleeker and smaller in footprint, surprisingly, the Roborock Diet Pro is easier to maneuver. And that's something I did not expect because it does look clunky. It does have that, those two rows of brushes. But fact is, it's significantly easier to move it around. They both have a self-propelled design where the brushes help propel the vacuum so you have minimal effort to push it around but still there's a noticeable difference when you switch from using the uh, dreamy h5 pro to the diet pro it feels much lighter it's much easier to maneuver it and the cleaning head is much more agile so it rotates left and right at a greater angle and it's it's much nicer much easier to use over the Dreamy H12 Pro. So in terms of maneuverability, I definitely like the Diet Pro over the H12 Pro. Another thing I really like about the Diet Pro, and it's something I haven't seen in any of the other wet and dry vacuums on the market, is that it has a tank for automatic detergent dispensing, which is really nice. So with most wet and dry vacuums, you fill the clean water tank with water, but you could also add cleaning detergent. But then every time you fill the clean water tank, you have to add the detergent and you have to get the right proportions, etc. The Diet Pro has a different approach. There's an independent tank that you fill with cleaning detergent. You put that on top of the cleaning head and it lasts you about 20 full clean water tanks and that's all. The machine automatically dispenses that in the right quantity, the right proportion, and you don't have to worry about refilling it for several months probably. And I find this a really nice feature. Another thing I prefer in the Diet Pro over the Dreamy H5 Pro is in the dirty water tank, there's some kind of filter and that's not the air filter, that's a filter to catch the solid debris uh, when you're cleaning to separate them from the dirty water. And to be honest, I was very surprised the H12 Pro does not have that because many of the similar products in the market, even the cheaper ones, have that filter. And the benefit of that filter, when you're cleaning your house, you're probably sucking solid debris as well, which is gonna get mixed up with the dirty water. When you're done cleaning and you wanna empty that dirty water, either down the sink or in your toilet, you probably don't wanna dump in all the solid debris that you uh, sucked up as well. And this is where the filter comes in handy. With the dyad, you can pour everything into that filter, which catches all of the solid debris, and then you can throw them in your garbage can and pour the liquid either in your sink or in the toilet. And that's another important point for me, which I really like in the dyad. Another thing the Diet has and the Dreamy does not is Wi-Fi connectivity. So using the Roborack app, you can connect the Diet Pro. And normally that's a gimmick with a lot of the manufacturers, but with the Diet Pro, the app is really well designed, but also there's a ton of things that you can do and customize. You can change, for example, the suction power, the amount of water that is being used, or even the speed at which the brush is rotating. And there's a lot of other settings that you can customize, like automatically resuming cleaning when you uh, move the vacuum out of the park position, or automatically starting the self-cleaning process as soon as you dock the machine. You can customize how many hours you want the drying cycle to take. You can start or even schedule silent drying, but also another drying mode, which is fast drying, which blows the fan at a higher air velocity. It's a bit louder, but it would take less time as there's more air that's being pushed on the brushes. And you can update the firmware of the machine, which means it could support updates in the future. And again, to be honest, I was surprised the Dreamy H12 Pro does not have any app connectivity given the price. So that's another point in favor of the Diet Pro. And another thing I prefer in the Diet Pro is the cleaning mode it has. So both of them have an automatic mode and this uses a sensor to adjust the suction power according to the debris or the mess that you're cleaning. For the most part, it works well on both of them with a slight edge of the Diad where I thought it was a bit more reactive to larger debris and messes in which it kicked the machine into higher power, but that's not why I prefer the Diet Pro. Uh, the second mode on the Diet Pro is maximum mode, and this one kicks the machine into maximum power on the H12 Pro, 
It has a mode called Ultra Mode, which I thought would kick the machine into maximum power, but apparently it does not. What it does is it electrolyzes water, so uh, in theory this is supposed to create a kind of a natural cleaning uh, solution with the water, but that's all it does. The machine remains in automatic mode, and here's where this is a bit problematic. In some cases, I don't want to rely on the machine to decide if it's going into maximum power or not. I want to force it into maximum power. That was the case, for example, in my cleaning test where I had ketchup that was dried on the floor. There was no actual mess for the machine to detect, so it was at the lowest setting in both machines because obviously the mess is dried out. However, with the Diet Pro, I could kick the machine manually into maximum mode to force more water, more suction power, uh, faster rotating brushes. With the Dreamy H5 Pro, I could not, and I had to live with it being at the uh, lowest power setting, which is something I wasn't very fond of. Um, I love the fact that it has automatic mode and this conserves battery and doesn't kick the machine into maximum mode unless you need it to, but I'd like the option to manually kick it into max mode, and this is why I prefer the Diet Pro in that area as well. Now, the Diet Pro also has an additional mode, which the Dreamy H12 does not have. They both have a floor drying mode, which does not dispense any water. It's simply sucking water. Although for some reason on the Diet, it's limited to one minute, and I don't know why, but I don't think it's a big deal. But then the Diet has a fourth mode, which is Eco mode, which is uh, less noisy, but also uses the least amount of power. So uh, it has more modes and better modes, and therefore I do prefer that in the Diet Pro over the H5 Pro. And lastly, the self-cleaning works well on both of them with a slight advantage to the Diet Pro. Um, when I ran the ketchup test, and I'll get to the cleaning test in a bit, uh, on the Diet Pro, uh, the brushes were a bit cleaner than they were on the Dreamy H12 Pro, where there was some stains of ketchup that remained. Just a slight edge on the Diet Pro over the Dreamy H12 Pro. So that's it for the feature comparison in terms of cleaning performance. I think both machines do a great job at that, with probably a small slight edge to the Diet Pro over the H12 Pro. I did a bunch of cleaning tests, starting with ketchup that I left on the floor for 12 hours to dry out. Both machines were able to get most of that ketchup out. Granted, it did take multiple passes to get them out, uh, but as you can see, the Diet Pro was slightly faster at getting that mess out. Uh, in terms of edge-to-edge -edge cleaning, I think both of them do a really good job and get really close to the edge. I did another test where I put honey on the floor and also left it out for 12 hours. Both of them got that mess out, and after a couple of passes, the floor was no longer sticky. Another test with some sour cream on the floor, again, both with no issue, but as you can see, the Diet Pro did leave a streak, which necessitated another pass on the floor to get that out. To see how they deal with solid debris, I put some milk and cornflakes on the floor, and again, both of them were able to get that out with no issue. But again, you see the streak on the Diet Pro. So while I do think the Diet Pro is probably just slightly superior in its cleaning efficiency, I wouldn't say it should be a decisive factor, um, just only a marginal improvement, I think, and probably because it has two rows of brushes that are acting versus only one brush on the H12 Pro. So to wrap things up, um, there's a bunch of things that I loved about the Diet Pro, a couple of things I liked about the H12 Pro. The perfect machine for me would be a combination of both, but unfortunately that doesn't exist. Personally, I think I would choose the Diet Pro. Despite the fact that I was really disappointed in the lack of the heated drying, despite feeling deceived by Roborock and this being an important feature for me, I think there's way too many things that the Diet Pro does better than the Dreamy H5 Pro. That me personally, I would prefer and recommend the Diet Pro over the H5 Pro. Now, one last thing, my recommendation is based on the assumption that both of them are priced at around the same price, and in normal cases they are. They both for about $450, $500, which makes recommending one or the other purely on the basis of features and not price. However, at the time of this review, 
Amazon is actually selling the Diet Pro for $350, which I think is a steal. I will put links in the description for the product pages, so make sure to click on these links to check the prices at the time of watching this review, uh, because with a $150 price difference, I would definitely recommend the cheaper one. Now, in this case, this is the Roborock Diet Pro, which was my pick anyway. However, if it was the other way around and the H12 Pro was at 350, so a $150 difference, then I probably would recommend that because despite me uh, preferring a lot of the features in the Diet Pro, I wouldn't particularly say they're worth $150. So make sure to click on the links to check the price at the time you're watching the review. Um, and again, my recommendation is based on what features I deem important. You might disagree. Uh, you might think some of the features that I think are important are useless while others are more important. And this is why I hope in my review, I tried to be objective and fair in highlighting both sets of features to hopefully equip you guys with what you need to make an informed decision based on the feature sets that you deem most important. That's all for now. If you have any of these machines or are thinking of purchasing any of them, do let me know in the comment section what you thought, which features you think are important and which are not. And as always, if you liked the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.